Hi everyone, this is Lady D and we're going to get right into it so we don't waste any time because you know we only have a certain amount of time here on YouTube and we're just going to pick off pick up where we left off on the last video entitled um, uh, is it really a lack of spiritual growth or is it just flat out rebellion and just to recap spiritual we were talking about a lack of spiritual growth is simply the fact that you don't know and if you don't know then you can't do better but once you know better then you can do better and the rebellion was we were talking about how that was just a simple I know I know what to do I know what I need to be doing I've heard it many times before however I've just come to decision that I'm going to do me, I'm going to reject the truth, and I'm going to refuse to obey. That's just flat out rebellion. So in the last video I left off on 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 and it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from, my, turn from their wicked ways, then I will he, uh, forgive their sins and heal the land. And, and that what that verse tells me right there, and, um, and these next few videos will be, we, we'll be talking about uh, some of the hindrances to us not growing up in the Lord. And I'll be going back and forth just depending on how the Lord leads in this series. I'm not going to say all of them will be back to back, but um, it is my prayer by the end of everything that you'll be able to go back through the series. You'll be able to pull some things out. You'll be able to glean some things. Um, and my prayer is this time next year that your resolution and when I mean your resolution I mean your resolve will be this time next year I will not be the same place spiritually so 2nd Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14 and it gives you three things before the Bible says and I will forgive your sins and heal the land it tells you if you humble yourself seek my face and turn from your wicked ways then if is an if clause and then a then clause okay so um in that we see that there are three actions that need to take place before before uh forgiveness was available and for healing was available and the first one was a humility just a flat out lord i know where i am I know the state of mess I'm in. I know that I'm not lining up to your word. This I know. I'm not trying to put on a fake for you. I'm not trying to put on a front for you. I've come to the place. I've come to the end of the road. And Lord, I'm humble before you. I have a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, please hear my humble cry. Lord, listen to me. Be attentive to my cry. That type of humility that says, Lord, here I am. Oh, wretched man, here I, he, he, here I am, the wretched man that I am. Here I am, the mess that I am. The, 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 the you know, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord, I'm, and, I, and I'm seeking your face, Lord. I'm seeking you for help. I'm seeking you for strength. I'm seeking you for forgiveness. I'm seeking you that you may build me up, that you may enable me, that I may be enabled to stand, that I may be empowered to now turn from my wicked ways, okay? Um, we need to, one of the hindrances in our spiritual walk with the Lord, one of our hindrances of growing up in the Lord is simply that we don't want to put in the work. Yep, it's as simple as that. That's one of our major hindrances is that we don't want to put in the work. And that goes naturally too. Uh, for example, a natural example. When I lost my weight, I lost 30 something pounds last year. Um, and, and once people found out that I lost the weight, they saw me, saw my picture, saw my, uh, you know, my journey. They, I had numerous people come to me and say, well, how did you do it? Girl, you look good. How did you do it? How are you doing it? Uh, what did you do? Tell me what did you take? What did you, where did you go? You know, did you go see somebody? Did you have the surgery? What, what, what is it? And when I simply say, you know what I did? I ate right. I exercise and I prayed. That's what I did. That's, that's, those are three things that I did. And the, 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 the main answer is, oh, 
and 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 it's so amazing because it just tells you it, it's it's a it's an indication of where they are uh, personally as far as being willing to put in the work that it takes to get the results but it's an indication of the society that we live in and spiritually speaking it's really an indication of the society that we live in and how we have lost sight of our as Christians now as followers of Christ as of our real home and I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later on too how uh, because of the society that we live in, we have adapted the thought processes and the mindsets of this society. And this society that we live in says, this is a microwave generation. Burger King, this is a Burger King generation. We want it our way, right away, right now. Microwave, we don't want to cook anymore. We want to go through the process of, of chopping up the onions and, and, and boiling the water and, and, and waiting to the stuff marinate. We don't want to do all that. We want to be able to put it in the microwave 30 seconds. We got a meal. Okay, well, that's what we want to do. And we have allowed that same mindset, the same attitude to come over into our spiritual lives. Whereas we know really what it takes. We know that we should be fasting. We know that we should be praying more. We know that we need to get our behinds up out of that bed and we need to be on our face. We know this. We know that we need to be turning that plate over. We know that we need to be turning that TV off. We know that we need to stop listening to that secular music. We know we need to stop hanging out with all those people who really don't care nothing about the Lord on a regular basis. We know that your in crowd, the main people you hang with should not be unsafe people. I'm just going to put that out there. We know those type of things that we need to do. We know that we need to get in the Word. We know it. We know we need to get in the Word. We know we need to be um, fellowshipping with other believers. We know this. But instead of that, we will rather stay because we don't want to put in the Word. And because we are spiritually lazy. Okay, because we are spiritually lazy, we will rather stay immature in Christ rather than to grow up because we simply don't want to put in the work. But that type of that type of mindset does not work with the people of God. That's not our type of mindset that we should have. We cannot afford to be spiritually lazy. That's how we give room to the enemy. That's how we give way to the enemy. That's why, again, our lives look like it is. Our, you know, and our deliverance has not taken place. Our mindset is still gone. Our peace is still stolen. We have no joy. We have, you know, we are not victorious because we, one of the reasons is because we don't want to put in the work that it takes to get the desired results to get what the Lord says is ours we don't want to do what it takes and clearly for those of you who say well it don't take all of that it don't take all of that you know we don't have to work for our we don't have to work you, you, that devil is a liar we do have to put in the work yes the Lord put in the work on the cross yes the Lord covered us with his blood he saved us and redeemed us but now we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling trembling even the Lord Jesus Christ said in the Gospels if any man decides to come after me let him first count the cost let him count the cost why what what is the purpose of counting the cost if we're not going to put if there's no work involved is there if there's nothing that's going to take place why do why did Jesus say we have to count the cost if we don't have to put no work if we don't have to live if we don't have to live our lifestyle if our lifestyle don't have to match what we present we what we profess why do we not have to if there, if there's no work to be put in why did he say well, let us count the cost and then he goes on to say who builds a building and don't count the cost uh, with uh, as far as what it's going to take to build this building not only did he not stop there but then he said let him deny himself and take up his cross daily that's that's work but Go to Ephesians chapter 4 and chapter 5 and let and, and let that get into your spirit. How it's talking about the action that believers need to take now, now that we have professed Christ in our life. That we just don't sit down and say the Lord is working it all out. That he, okay, I'm, you know, oh yes, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. Okay, after that. After we get up off the floor, after we finish all of that, now we have to live this lifestyle out. And Paul here tells us all 
uh, uh, of the things. He tells us the things that we need to do, such as now we have to put off our old self and we have to be made new in the attitudes of our minds. I'm starting, I'm around verse 20. And 24 says, and to put on the new self. 25 says, to put off falsehood. 28 says to if he if you were stealing before you got saved, now that you're saved, you steal no longer. And then it goes on to 29 and says, do not let any unwholesome talk. And 30 says, do not grieve. 31 says, get rid of. 32 says, be kind and compassionate. And verse 5, and chapter 5 verse 1 says, be imitators. Those are action words. Those are actions. So Lord, let us cry out to the Lord. And I'm going to continue to say this. Let's be real with the Lord.